Hi, my name is Fiala and I wanted to tell you about the Reka elements, the elements that go into making Reka vodka. We're in Iceland and all these elements are natural. I'll be running through them one at a time and I'm going to start off with uh, the most basic one, which is the Icelandic water. Uh, of course, we need the air to be clean and that's why we are breathing the clean Icelandic air, mostly because we don't use a lot of pollutants to heat our houses and so on. But the water in Iceland, the spring water, is exceptionally clear. You can go to any stream, most streams, mind you, not the glacial ones, and there you can just dip your glass into the pure water and have a sip. Cold and refreshing and no additives, no minerals, nothing to cloud, just a pure cold taste of Icelandic water. We are now at a place, a geothermally active place in a, close to the Reka distillery, which is called Teltartunka. And here we have a hot spring, which is uh, really the most uh, protective hot spring in all of Europe, because it pumps out 180 liters per second of piping hot water that gets pumped to all the communities around Iceland, uh, around this, this place, and including the distillery, where we use it to uh, preheat the still for making Reka. And the other thing that uh, this place has to do with Reka is that because of the geothermal energy so abundantly available in Iceland, we were able to get rid of all the uh, fossil fuel burning means of heating our houses with the uh, accompanying smoke and pollution. So now Borkanes, the village uh, surrounding the Reka distillery, is in fact a very clean place. The air is clean and the chimneys are now decorative instead of functional. This place is where you can see lava filtering in nature. Because the, uh, the lava basket, the glass case that we have at the still, isn't just a marketing gimmick, although it's a pretty good marketing gimmick, it's also a manifestation of the reality of uh, the way water behaves in a lava bed. Because the lava rock itself is porous. It has all these tiny holes and fissures, and when water passes over a lava bed, it doesn't make a nice tidy river like it does very often in normal terrain. Instead, the water seeps through everywhere and anywhere and just falls down. Like you see behind me, you can see the lava bed is really laying like a layer on top of older, firmer ground. And the water that's coming trickling is water that has been seeping through the lava rock and in the same time, at the same time as it seeps through the lava rock, all the impurities and the sort of stuff that you don't want to have in your water gets left behind in all these small pockets and fissures and little cracks in the lava rock. So the water that comes through the lava rock is pure.